Hi, my name is Paul Abernathy, and I'm the manager of Codes and Standards here at Encore Wire. On today's episode from the desk of Codes and Standards, we're going to talk about a product that causes a bit of confusion in the industry, and I'd like to dispel some of the myths that are around the product, and that is a healthcare facility MC product, most notably our Smart Ground HCF MC cable. Now, many people believe that this product, and I happen to have some here, is required to be green. Or they even believe that the labels are required to be green and on the actual cable itself. Now while we use a smart color ID system and do put labels on our products or MC cables, it's not required by any standard, no more than the requirement to put colored sheathing on non-metallic sheath cable. That's not a requirement in the National Electrical Code either, but people have come accustomed to seeing it. The fact of the matter is, in order for this to be used in a healthcare facility, it has to meet some specific construction requirements, and that's what we want to talk about today. And again, kind of put to rest some of those myths that people have about the markings or what kind of labels have to be on here or whether it has to be green or whatnot. None of that's required by NFPA 99, which is the healthcare uh, uh, facility standard. Nothing in UL 1569 would require the green armor or the green labels or any labels at all. And there's nothing within the National Electrical Code that requires any labels at all. The labels that we place on our products are simply an optional identification method. It's not required. If you removed them, it would be just as compliant as if they were on there. So now, let's talk about uh, MC cable for a second. I know you've seen other videos that I have about MC products, so this should be probably old information for you, but let's kind of do a refresher here. Normal MC cable, the armor itself cannot be used as an effective ground fault current path. In other words, it can't be an equipment ground and conductor. Okay? But when you create something called a smart ground product, what we've done is in a normal MC, you have an insulated equipment ground and conductor. We actually remove that from the MC and we'll actually put in an aluminum grounding slash bonding conductor that runs to the entire length of the actual cable assembly. It makes intimate contact with all of the metal convolutions throughout the entire length of the cable. By doing that, it qualifies this armor as an effective ground fault current path and it qualifies as an equipment grounding conductor. Now, with our normal smart ground products, that saves you a lot of time and labor because you don't need to terminate this insulated equipment grounding conductor. You simply take this uninsulated grounding slash bonding conductor. When you get to the end, you simply bend it back, you snip it off, you use a properly listed fitting, which is an MCI-A fitting, you place it on the cable assembly and you connect it onto a metal box or an enclosure and that's all you need to do in order to make that whole system intact when it comes to the grounding equipment grounding component. Now, what makes a smart ground a healthcare facility cable? Well, what we do is we, we create a smart ground product by putting this aluminum grounding slash bonding conductor inside of the system. But then we also add back that insulated equipment grounding conductor. Because in accordance with the National Electrical Code, in order to be used in a healthcare facility, most notably for receptacles and fixed electrical equipment, in a patient care space within that healthcare facility, you have to have something called a redundancy. So there's a specific section within the National Electrical Code, and that's 517.13a and b. And both of those, a and b, are going to give us the guidelines that we need to meet as far as using this type of product in the patient care spaces of a healthcare facility. So the first thing that we need to do is let's go on and look at 517.13a and b and we'll work our way back and find out what actually creates an equipment grounding conductor. But first, we need to see what creates a smart ground product for use in a healthcare facility. All right, so now we're at the, the National Electrical Code, and this happens to be the 2017 edition of the National Electrical Code. So here is your 517.13, and the charging statement here for this section is grounding of receptacles and fixed electrical equipment that is located in a patient care space. And you also have to meet both A and B of this section. All right, now A is dealing with the wiring method. This happens to be a wiring method. It's type MC. Uh, and the B is dealing with the requirement for that redundancy, that additional insulated equipment grounding conductor that we place back into the smart ground product in order to make it a healthcare facility product. So you have the A requirement, which is this armor, 
and the B requirement, which is this insulated equipment grounding conductor that gets added to the product. When you have both of those components in this cable, you now have a product that can meet the requirements of 517.13A and B for use in patient care spaces. Now, let's look at A specifically because there seems to be a lot of confusion when people look up this requirement. Many people tend to think that the armor has to be green or that it has to have green labels or that it has to have some kind of identification on the actual armor itself. That's simply not true. Let's look at the requirements here. A in 517.13a says that all branch circuits, and that's what these are, serving patient care spaces shall be provided with an effective ground fault current path by installation of a metal raceway system. That would be like an EMT, electrical metallic tubing, uh, rigid metal conduit, intermediate metal conduit. All of those are metallic raceway systems. Now it says, or a cable having metallic armor, that's right here, or sheathing assembly. That's what we have here. So we have a NC metal clad cable. This is metallic armor. And this cable armor system shall itself, in itself, qualify as an equipment grounding conductor in accordance with 250.118. We're going to look at that in a second to see what qualifies this MC healthcare facility smart ground product as a equipment grounding conductor as far as his armor is concerned. All right? So we have to meet that requirement first. The next requirement for the healthcare facility is that we have to have an insulated equipment grounding conductor. It has to be copper uh, and it has to be green along its entire length. And that is what the insulated equipment grounding conductor gets added back into the smart ground product is going to do. So now I have the armor as one path and I have this separate insulated equipment grounding conductor as the other path. It is copper and it is green along its entire length. That's the part two that you have to meet here. Now, this product meets that. Now, we have to go a little further because there's some more misconceptions. Believe it or not, there are people that believe that you actually take this bare aluminum grounding slash bonding conductor and terminate it to junction boxes or terminate it to receptacles. And that is not what the code requires in that redundancy requirement. As you see right here, it says that the insulated equipment grounding conductor, that is this one in this product, it gets terminated to the receptacles. And it also states that this is what gets terminated to the metal outlet boxes, metal device boxes, metal enclosures. It has nothing about the actual wiring method. It's only talking about the insulated equipment grounding conductor. That's it. Don't get confused in it. And you'll also notice that the notion of the green insulation only applies to this insulated conductor. It doesn't apply to this armor. This is not insulation. This is a metallic armor, okay? So this product meets both of those requirements. Now, where exactly in 250.118 states that this armor, when you put this aluminum bonding slash grounding conductor in it, qualifies as an equipment grounding conductor? Well, that's when we have to look at 250.118. Now let's do that. So I'll go to here. And I'll do a search and we'll do 250.118. And here we go. And I'll get rid of that. So now you've got the types of equipment grounding conductors. Well, you have 14 different types that you can meet it here. We're mostly going to worry about item 10. That is this one right here. Now, normal NC cable, like we said before, the armor wouldn't qualify. But this is something unique because it meets the requirement to be an effective ground fault current path because we're meeting the requirements of B of item 10. And that's this one right here. Now let's read and see what it says. It states the combination of the metal sheathing with the uninsulated equipment grounding slash bonding conductor that is interlocked inside the cable makes intimate contact with all of the convolutions, and it is listed and identified as an equipment grounding conductor. Now, first and foremost, in order to meet the requirement of UL 1569, we have to comply with this requirement. We have to have our MC cable listed, and it has to be identified for the use. Otherwise, how could we sell it? Now, with that said, 
once we've established that this does meet the requirements in 517.13a to meet the requirements of, of 250.118 item 10b, we've established that. Now, let's go to the other misnomer that people have. Sometimes people say that, wait a minute, it has to be identified because the code says that all electrical equipment and wiring methods have to be identified. You are correct. However, how you identify that product is solely based on what the standard requires. And the standard requires that this product be listed and identified. So now let's look at what 1569 says about it. 1569, and I'll actually make it larger so that you can see it, states that we can actually put that identifying information on the tag, reel, or carton of the product. You would not put any marking on this armor. The labels are a patent by Encore Wire. It's simply a smart color ID system. They're not required to be on here. It's just something that we do for different types of MC and AC cables that we produce. I could take these off and it wouldn't matter at all. The problem is that people don't understand that when you identify a product for a use, it's based on the UL standard that we make it to. And in this standard, you'll see what it states, that on the reel, on the tag, or the carton that's placed on the product itself, not the actual cable, has to show all of this information. It has to show the voltage, it has to give the construction use, it has to give whether the conductor's inside or 90 degrees C rated or not, it has to make sure it's clear for use in a wet, dry, wet, or uh, a wet or dry application. But here's the most important part. And let's move on down because this is where people get confused. Right down here at the bottom. Let's see if we can find it because this is the one I want people to read. And let me make it larger so that you can see it. Remember, this is about being, oh, let me, let me go up. This is about being on the tag, the reel, or the carton. It's nothing about the actual cable itself. That's where some people get confused. Now let's go down and read what it says. All of the information is required to be on that tag, that reel, or that label. But it also goes to say this. Cables with interlocked aluminum or zinc coated steel armor and a bare, it's important for you to read this, bare grounding and bonding conductor as we have in this product in accordance with 6.1.6 .6 that we talked about earlier, shall be marked as, quote, armor and, and bare grounding slash bonding con uh, conductor are an acceptable ground path per NEC 250.11810B. It says the MC cable fittings shall comply with the requirements for use as a grounding means and must be used with this cable. All of this has to be placed on that label, that reel, or that carton. None of which has to be placed on the cable. So when somebody says it has to be identified for its use, there's nothing in MC cable that requires it to be identified on the cable. The standard specifically allows for it to be installed on a label, a tag, or the reel. That's what it says in the code. Uh, it's really easy to get UL 1569 if you want to see that requirement, but that's the requirement for listing and labeling. The listing is UL 1569. The labeling is all of that information that the standard requires, our manufacturer's name, and all of that information has to be put on the label or the tag or the reel itself. It does not have to go on the actual cable. That's what's called identified. So sometimes people get confused with that. All right, let's take it back to me uh, and see if we can uh, uh, wrap it up here. So. Encore Wire's Smart Ground HCF MC cable has two paths. The armor path based on this aluminum grounding slash bonding conductor which you snip off. You don't bring it through the connector. You don't bend it back against the armor. You cut it off. You actually have to get a fitting that's an MCI-A fitting. You place that onto the actual armor. You torque it down properly and you install it into a metal junction box or metal enclosure. That's it. In a healthcare facility, you have this insulated equipment grounding conductor, which is what makes the connection to the receptacles as well as to the metal junction box in a healthcare facility application. It has nothing to do with this bare conductor, it has nothing to do with the armor in that application. You create two redundant paths that are required by the standard. Okay? So hopefully that answers that question. 
Other people ask us about the paper all the time. Well, there's a reason we use the paper. One is it individually wraps all the conductors, and we're always we're concerned when people cut the armor. We want to make sure that they don't damage the insulation because the integrity of the insulation is very important. So we pay a little extra. It costs us more to actually use the paper. But if you put it in there, when you cut your armor, you can actually notice whether or not you've actually cut into the paper. And if you've cut into the paper, then you have to look at the conductor. So it's really a precaution that we put in there. Now here's the other thing I want to show you, and I don't know if I can get a picture of it. We're required to actually put this aluminum grounding slash bonding conductor inside of the interstices as it, as it lays into the cable. And it has to become outside of the paper and in intimate contact. Well, whether you can see that or not, it is right there. As you can see, I can pull this open, and you see it's actually cabled right here with the actual assembly. There you go, see? And so what it does is it touches this armor through the entire length. That's what allows this armor to be an effective ground fault current path, okay? So hopefully you know the difference between normal MC, our smart ground MC, and now you know what makes smart ground MC a healthcare facility MC when you add that insulated equipment grounded conductor back into the product. Okay? If you have any additional questions or you need some more clarification, feel free to email us at codes at uncoalwire.com and we'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. And thanks again for the taking time out of your day to watch another installment of From the Desk of Codes and Standards.